We're celebrating poets. And not just any poets. We celebrating soul filled poets today. They got it memorized. This is the truth being spoken from the heart, from the soul, and from the mind of people who have identified the problems. The words they use are the same words that all the rest of us use, but it's the composition. It's the way they put it together. It's the way they allow it to flow through them. These are messages from spirit and it should affect us all. You'll hear what you're missing. Cotton field chants and hollers, deep to the dismay of musical scholars. From way back down Tobacco Road, King Cotton by the truckload, for when it's playtime on the plantation. Deep musical incantations. Play it deep. Play it deep for the boss man's pleasure. Play it deeper than the well can measure. Play it for toe taps and porch lights. Play it for burning crosses and torch lights. Play it for peaks under Missy Slip. Play it for less time under the whip. Play it for mustard greens and fat back. Play it for the weight of the cotton sack. Play it for the boss man's pleasure. Play it deeper than any well can measure. Play it for peaks under Missy Slip. Play it for less time under the whip. Play it so that they know the meaning of true blue. Welcome everyone to this rendition of the Poets Corner. Here we are in this beautiful blue room doing our thing and we've got a lineup that's out of this world for you today. I want to bring out some poets. We've got a visiting gentleman from out of town but first and foremost I want to bring up my little sister. This woman right here, she's the reason I wear my shirts on the outside. We'll put it like that. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, some call her Bridget, some call her E.P., some call her the erotic princess. I call her my little sister. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, please welcome to the mic the erotic princess. Yeah. 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 Thank, you, Thank you. Hi, I'm Bridget. I am the erotic princess, and I'm glad to be here tonight. I want to say hello to my, our visiting poet. I can't wait to hear your stuff. My first one is called, When We Collide. I see you from across the room and I start to smile to myself. I can still feel your touch, your kiss, your entry into my paradise. You see, people think that being with you is just all about the sex, but they don't understand that everything about you makes me moist. Shit! The way your hands caress my rolling hills, thinking about your brown skin up against my brown skin. Baby, don't you know that when you just casually brush up against me, I feel my whole spirit tremble. Ooh. There's something about my connection to you that is magnetic. It is fiery, and most of all, it is erotically sensual. And when we collide, it's a beautiful explosion of passion, of pain, and raw energy that just can't be explained. The entry to pull out, the entry to pull out, the entry to pull out, God damn! Whew. You're like a bull in a china shop, strong, fierce, and steadily wrecking shit. I am holding on for dear life, digging my nails into your strong back, feeling like I'm being bucked off a powerful, majestic animal. Lord have mercy. The ride is thrilling, but it's dangerous because with each dig into my nectar, I am falling deeply in love with you. If I could give you the world and wrap it all around you like I'm wrapping my beautiful chocolate legs around your waist and the sweat of your beautiful chocolate body glistening like gold, your aura is bright orange like fire, and you're filling me up with all your maleness. 
Every time you are near me, my poor heart just won't keep still. And that's how I feel every time that we collide. I'm loving your smooth and shiny inside. In my feelings for you, I can no longer hide. Thank you. This one is called Chocolate. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways and the days that chocolate have fulfilled my craves. I like the way it rolls off my tongue, fills my lungs, break me down until I say young. Please tell me, boy, how do I get some? I can't wait for chocolate to show up at my place, kiss my face, touch me in that oh so special space. When I get within three feet of you, I just can't concentrate. There is nothing more beautiful, rich, and smooth like a chiseled muscle, deep dimple, slow, sensuous groove. And if I ever fell into your decadent hands, I would not be able to move. Mm, mm, mm. I could get arrested, dear chocolate, for the wicked thoughts that I have, but does that make me naughty? Hell no. Just very, very bad. I have had chocolate licked from my fingertips, my luscious thighs, and my ample hips, but when eaten slowly from my full, full lips, it gives me the most wonderful climactic lift. And as always, I'm thanking God for my wonderful chocolate gift. But knowing in reality, I can never get enough of your sweet, sticky chocolate stuff. Kicking this chocolate habit could be tough, but ask me, am I scared? Hell no. Coming to a close, chocolate, I just want you to know in this life, if loving you is wrong, I don't ever want to be right. Thank you. Now, how's she going to get in front of the camera and, and tell all our business like that? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, baby. My wife might be watching, girl. <laughs> cut that out. Tell her not to cut me. I can't run. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't tell her anything because she'd be on cutting me first. <laughs> Such is life. All right, my brother, tell us who we have here in the Blue Room slash Ports Corner today. What's going on, yeah? My name is Terrell. I go by Too Scared Real. A lot of people ask me what Too Scared Real means. I tell them I was not only wearing the packs, but in life I'd be wearing the facts. That's how my stage name came about, so yeah, call me too scared. All right, brother, where you hail from? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. And yes, what, what, do, what do you do there? I mean, I, as far as the arts are concerned. Sure, I'm a spoken word poet. Um, I host venues. I have a couple of venues throughout the weeks that I um, throughout the week that I host. One is on Saturday. It's a, a open mic, spoken word, comedy, uh, music. <clears throat> all of the arts. On Sundays, I do just uh, comedy and poetry. Right. And it's a reggae themed open mic, so. Okay, comedy, poetry, reggae, so yeah. spanning the spectrum. I'm, um, I'm working on it, yeah. All right, so other than, other than being a spoken word artist, do you do any of those other things, or are you just the host with the most? Well, believe it or not, um, I'm connected to the comedy world because I believe that I have a sense of humor. I have a lot of friends who are really talented comedians, so I like to get with them and work on it. The music has been part of my life since day one. I started out with the music, graduated into writing poetry, so. Yeah, no, I pretty much, I mean, I love it. I love the arts, <clears throat> I love entertainment, I love being a part of it, so. Yeah. And how old were you? How long ago did you discover that you had a knack for the arts, uh, for being a spoken word artist? Okay, well, you know, to be honest with you and straightforward, um, my story began during incarceration. So I was incarcerated in the Missouri Department of Corrections for quite some time. I went in as a teenager, came out as a full-grown adult. <clears throat> but it was during that time, during those moments of solitude and solitary confinement, those moments of, like, digging deep and how do I get through this, when things started to take shape in my mind. And at the same time, I was interested in learning, and I read a lot. So it, it helped my communication skills. And with my communication skills, you know, rising up, I was able to express what I was feeling. This gentleman coming up, coming right back to this stage, is from out of town. He's uh, coming here. He's a first-timer here at the Poets' Corner. He comes 
from a poetic place. He's here out of St. Louis, Missouri. I'm sorry, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> and he's bringing us a taste of his own flavor. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm Poets Corner welcome to my brother, my new, newly, found, my newly found brother, Two Scales Rail. Absolutely, absolutely. It's an honor to be here in the Blue Room. And I'd like to extend my honors to the other poets here. I appreciate you guys for welcoming me here. I bring a message from the trenches. I bring a message from what they call the trap. Uh, this is my life, my story. So today I want to address just a couple of topics. And the first one is the fact that it just ain't no loyalty no more. And most niggas not. Are they rats and they homos and so on and so on and so on and so. From this day on, oh, I'm just rolling solo. The closest thing to my heart, oh, that's my horse now. I'm in polo on every photo. Right. But I won't tell y'all shit about my best friend because I used it to get rid of my ex-friend. Oh, right. See, I caught him with his hands in my pocket and I had, oh, y'all must know the story of Malcolm X thing. But you see, the ones that survive, I think the feds gonna life us all because that iPhone get you a conspiracy that's gonna be your final call. But listen, in my world, all the scales, they double. I tell them, Chi-Chi, get the yellow, it's butter. You see all the bag size, them duffel, but all these hip women, they trouble. See, that's why I don't play a spades up, because Ronald L. Jones selling graves out. Statistically, AIDS is up, and the penitentiary are handing graves out. And it's crazy, because brothers locked up, bragging on their V-forces and their rat kids. But out here in the streets, they just as backwards, because they stuck on the club in a quarter-ounce crack flip. But ask people about my assets and they'll answer, oh, his cash up. Yeah, I really hustle when the STL. I'm through the streets like the cash bus. But see, we need Project Slate back. Like a gram chopper needs his plate back. So we can clean up the streets and get rid of this new mixed breed of snake rat. Because I'm sick of these niggas. I'm just outright disgusted. They got no morals, they word ain't shit. And they just can't be trusted. Well. And it just ain't no loyalty no more. And most days, most niggas now they Rats and they homos and so on and so on and so. From this day on, I'm just rolling solo. But it's just me and my Pyrex in the kitchen, the red lines on it to guide my measurer. Mm -hmm. But I feel back from the Bloods and Crips. Them organizations don't have a treasurer. See, I'm just trying to pull y'all out of the bullshit. I'm going to put my young niggas on boss shit. Yeah, over the stove is my pulpit, but you're going to meet your maker when you come with that cross shit. Oh, right. Amen? Amen? Oh, we put a hole in your clothes on Easter. Going to gorilla mode, beast you. They get extendos loaded and heat you and hit you with a hot iron that'll fold and crease you. Because when I'm hype, oh, I feel like I'm Jerry Lewis Bay reincarnated. I feel like I'm the autobiography of Scarface. Oh, fuck it, I'm like Larry Davis in the hallway mixed with Maserati Rick in the car chase. And you see them gangsters from back in the day. Back from when if a nigga act foul, it was a flag on the plate. But when nobody gonna come with whistles, they was goons, they came with pistols. So I just been sent to give y'all a warning. Repent, it's about to start storming. I got a couple fellas that's about to come home from the feds and they're gonna light this shit up like it's morning and expose all of the faces of all of y'all who disgracing this game as we know it to be. Cause it just ain't no loyalty no more. And most niggas now they rats to they homos and so on and so on and so. From this day on, oh I'm just rolling solo. But I'm in a huddle with my account. Fuck trophies, I'm playing for stacks. Now when I say two scales working, not only the packs, but I be weighing the facts. Shout out to my friends in Atlanta, Tech. I swear to tell the truth, but no hands on the Bible. Cause most niggas don't really understand it. But two hands clutching a rifle? Oh, he won't hesitate to smite you. The crosshairs will sight you. The trigger pull will ignite you and the infrared will light you. What I'm saying, you damn right I'm from St. Louis, where we get straight to it. But it just hasn't been the same since they brought this gay and hate shit to it. You see, I call it lame hopping. Y'all informing the enemy, name dropping. Brothers getting they her done in shops now. You see them? Straight gossiping. I mean, rats and homos, I thought that was two main no-nos. But you see, it used to be as simple as a phone call. Dr. Jockenstein, get me on the roll call. I'm going to set these suckers out. But the people put a hold on it. 
Y'all remember they had Stop Snitching T-shirts? Somebody told on that. <laughs> Game crossers and cross dressers. Yes. It's like, since we came across the Atlantic, we done lost the message. Tell it. But that's why bootlickers ain't gonna feel this. But fuck them, this real shit. Yeah, they was right. in a house, that's who they live with. Yeah. I speak for the niggas I'm out here in the field with. Because yeah. I remember we used to hustle from sun up to the moon drop with Tupac in the tune box. Dope soft, the fiends and spoon rock. But this new shit funny, and I ain't talking about boondocks. Oh. Mm. You see these little niggas, they done flipped the script. They flip at the lip, and they done started snitching and shit. And I remember back in the day when the new thing was starter coats and pro model caps. Then we got guns, glocks with the hollow caps. And one day I saw my daddy soaking cotton in the bottle caps. So I had to ask, where was all the role models at? Yeah, they was dead and locked up. And that's why it just ain't no loyalty no more. And most niggas not. Oh, they rats to so they homos and so on and so on and so. From this day on, I'm just rolling solo. Thank you. Too scared real, y'all. Yes, sir. Yeah. to young people who may see this and can find some um, relations to what you went through. What would, what would you tell them to get them right? I would say that, <clears throat> and not to jump fast and speak too soon, but thinking about this, thinking back when I was 17 years old and made those mistakes, I remember there were those in my life who consistently warned me and told me about what was about to happen. Those were people who cared about me. But I chose to follow and deal with people who didn't care. And I always had to look back and wonder, like, how do you make that mistake? How do you go against those who love you to follow those who have no love for you? And it's just all about your perception and your understanding of who you are and your value. You just think about it. If someone, a mother or a father who will feed you and take care of you and raise you, you know, you we're quick to think that, oh, you want to tell me what to do? You want to control my life? No, simply those people have been where you've been probably three, four, or five times, and they really want to help you. So I would say, you have a, a treasure in those who care about you, and those who guide you right. It's, it's easy to sit down and ask them what you need to know. They give you all the game you need to know in life. They'll put you leagues ahead the people in your age group if you listen to those who came before you. And that's the advice I would give. All right. What do you think, how much of what you do now stems from what you've been through earlier. What's the influence? Yeah, all of it. Um, and, and it. And it's intentional. Because I felt like when I was first released or when I went through that, it was a major loss. I felt like it was a loss of my time, my life, uh, watching my family and children grow. Until I began to understand that that story, that process that I went through can be very helpful to others. It, it, you know, probably can. So I began to take everything that I've been through and I, I channeled it in my writing, my relationships, you know, um, just the way I think and move is, everything is, is serious, it's, it's meant, it has to be able to have a purpose behind it. It's so, time for your young life was spent in St. Louis, Missouri? Yes, sir. Okay, and? I mean, I've, I've moved around, I've lived in California, you know, different places, so. Albuquerque, New Mexico. I lived in Atlanta for a little while. I lived in Henderson for some time. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah. And that takes us to my next question. What brings you to Las Vegas, Nevada? Blue Soul Productions. Blue Soul. <laughs> um, I am a serious, serious fan of the Poets Corner. The first time I was able to contact Ellis Rice about the Blue Soul, about the Poets Corner, um, I was already in awe, you know, when I first saw the first the, the first episode. So it became a goal to me. And God is good because it happened. God is good because it happened. I mean, at the moment, at the first, when I first saw it, I didn't imagine that I'd be here today with this opportunity. But it came. All right. Well, let me be the first to welcome you here, brother. Thank you. Give us your name one more time so the people out there will remember you and after Absolutely. we see you, <laughs> Yeah, my name is Terrell. Um, they call me Too Scared Real. My Instagram and Facebook is Real, R-E-L-L, -L, Double. Real Double, but I abbreviate the double with D-U-B-L. So it's Real Double Scared. You'll find it. You'll see me with the red St. Louis hat, the spoken word on there. You know, you follow me on Instagram, 
Ask, send me a friend request on Facebook. I'm trying to link up with the world. I'm trying to share my pain. I'm trying to hear everybody else's. I'm trying to grow. You know? Yes, sir. Let me be the first to welcome you. Well, on camera anyway. What, okay. To welcome you <laughs> to Las Vegas, to Blue Soul Productions, to the Blue Room, and to the Poets Corner, brother. You are here. Absolutely, absolutely. And I would advise all of my friends, any other artists, any other entertainers, listen, if you come to Las Vegas, contact Blue Soul Productions. If you want to get good quality recording, audio, visuals, if you need high tech production assistance to help you with your work, contact Blue Soul. They're going to get you together. This here is the season for ghosts, ghouls, and costumes. So I'm going to assume that at the end of the night, and y'all wake up, after a night of hiding in wigs and painting y'all face up, there's some people gonna try to trick me for real, hiding behind their makeup. You see, so when they lipstick get to spitting that hip shit, oh, I tell them, slow down, let's put this in a time frame. Is this a trick or a treat? Something to grow on or some childish ass mind game? You see, because the game is vicious. The shit done got tilted and it's strange and different. And in my experience, the highest levels of fuckery came from those who said they fuck with me. So imagine all the time and attention I invested. Gone. That's a double loss. Facts. But when somebody break your heart and betray your trust, that's a double cross. Mm. So don't ask me this year why I ain't celebrating and don't want to have no fun. Because the mask everybody got on ain't new. Nigga, y'all been had on one. Mm. Yeah, you see, when you hide behind your true feelings, you false flag. Nigga be smiling in your face, but really hateful of a boss sway. So you know what happens when you make the mouse mad. He run in the house and tell him about everything, even the couch stage. So I'm telling y'all, the game done got vicious. The shit done got tilted, and it's strange and different. And I done seen it all through my Oliver Peoples, if you don't know them specs. But that vintage vision makes it hard to tolerate today's people. Them facts. Look how a motherfucker hide behind, I love you. Get the signing certificates in front of the witnesses, and they even call on God. But the first minute, though, that shit get difficult, you're going to see. Amen. It was all a facade. You see, that's that love mask. It's the most wild and sinister. But it's tricky, like a pedophile minister. Mm. You ever been dealing with somebody and they cause some confusion, create an illusion, then every time you look up, it's some new shit they introducing? Yep. Well, I ain't going. And just because everybody go right, it ain't no crime to go left. And if you ain't questioning your own thoughts, I'm here to tell you now, you just been hiding from yourself. You see, there ain't nothing wrong with standing in your own lane, not driving too close to the media. I ain't saying don't try, but let's stop all this fake shit that I see every day on social media. Because I'm a stove captain. I did my homework. I was in the kitchen with the fork in my hand. I had the bowl working. But with every skirt, I knew I was killing my neighborhood. So at the same time, I was doing some soul searching. I just wanted to get to the mass ripping. Expose all the backstabbing and the ass kissing. All the fraud. Niggas with no constitution. You watching another man's pockets. That's male prostitution. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to expand on it all night. Just long enough till we get it right. And to my women, I'm just saying, it ain't no hope if we plan. We got to do better than that. I say to my women, it ain't no hope if we plan. If we want to win, we got to do better than that. Tell it. Thank you. Yeah. You family now? Okay. Yeah, you you belong you belong to us now. You 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 wanna us us. Yeah, that's two scale rail right there. Our newest, our newest member. He's riding that short bus with the with the rest of us slow learners. <laughs> with the rest of us slow learners on his way. Yes, all aboard. All aboard. Beep beep. Here he come. Yes, sir. Man, bringing that flavor. Right out of St. Louis, man. Respect, much respect. Looking forward to seeing this brother and working with him again. All right, we want to thank the poets that came out tonight. Want to give a special thanks to my sister Bridget, the erotic princess, and of course, Two Scale Rail, man. That um, gave us a little something that we hadn't had much of before. So, yes, indeed, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Before he was able to flex, 
signed his name with an X, got secret respect from the so-called bosses. He calculated his losses, but his woman wasn't one of them. She never made fun of him for his absence of bling or material things. She was at his side. She didn't have to hide her pride. He was strong, black and strong, black and long, like a blues song, bittersweet and knew how to treat his woman. With all the power he could summon, he worked hard and he played hard. Never mind his neighbor's yard, he had his house in order. A tall order for today's turkey's faking manhood. You see, a good man should stand up to be counted. With all the tension mounted, it's time to put away those petty crimes. It's time for us to build. Brothers and sisters, it's nation time. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate y'all being here this time. My honest impression would be um, it's very uh, like warm felt. Like when people come, they feel that like they're at home and um, they always enjoy themselves. Well, I must say that being involved with media with, on radio station KCP and also being the owner of the Las Vegas Sentinel Voice, Nevada's only black weekly publication in the state of Nevada, it had an opportunity to do some interviews. And feel the love, <clears throat> excuse me, amongst all the, the participants there. And they always have a good time, enjoy, self, enjoy themselves at all times, even when a small group or even a large group. And that was one of the first times that I would say that I stepped into it because when I found out that there was a venue that gave an opportunity for people to speak within and on the west side, that inspired me to come more often and to be a part of it as much as I could, as well as promote it as much as I could. Uh, like different poets corners but it was never like the West Las Vegas Art Center's Poets Corner and um, I have been blessed to be able to get to know so many gifted and uh, talented individuals that um, I would have never been able to uh, get to know uh, otherwise. Because it's a struggle and it's a struggle that we must admit to but at the same time, we must not bow down to. So when we find a way to do something different and an opportunity for different media aspects and roles that we can do this, we must achieve it. And that's something I try to do and inspire my, my, uh, my sons to get involved. And as you might know or can remember, Isaac Sawyer, he was one of the individuals that was a participant within the program and within the West Las Vegas uh, Art Center. And it's the Mecca of the West Side.